So we saw here, and this is just a quick recap, that when it is, you have fractions that have the same denominator. When you have fractions that have the same denominator and you're adding or subtracting, you could just add or subtract the numerators and keep the same denominator. And we were seeing that this is particularly useful in algebra when we go in the other way around, right? That is when you have two different numbers being added and subtracted over one number, that that means that you have numbers being added and subtracted over the same denominator. You could split it back up. If anybody doesn't understand anything, please let me know. And so we got some, um, some examples of this in that last class. And Karen, you said that you did the video for it so that I hope all of this looks familiar to you, right? Yes, yes, I all did right. it. Then we talk about uh, multiplying fractions. And when you're multiplying, you just multiply your numerators and your denominators, same as SEA. Notice nothing has changed from the SEA rules. Nothing, nothing new. But we're just looking at it different because we do actually have numbers like two multiply by three means we can't actually multiply it out. We can't actually boil down the baji. You know, so now we will just have AC, but because multiplication is commutative, that's the same as CA. And this is the rule that allows us to cross cancel. And we also saw various ways of splitting up a multiplication, but this is the rule that causes us to cross cancel. So if you ever wondered why it is I could take a factor from this fraction and cancel it with a factor from the a factor from the denominator of this fraction. So you have a number that is in the numerator of one fraction, and I could cancel it with the denominator of the next fraction. How is that possible? Well, this is the reason why it's possible. Because multiplication is commutative. So you could switch the order, right? And so look, we're seeing it again down here. That multiplication is commutative. Right, so that you could actually, and this is the proof as to why. And we saw some multiplication of fractions questions. Then we spoke about dividing fractions. The same rules again as SEA, where you just flip the fraction and multiply. So the same rules again. Flip the divisor and then you multiply. As you can see here, when you see a divide, the divisor is the number after the divide. So this is the one that you flip in and you add your multiplication sign instead. Right? And so we had some questions here. right? And then we spoke about the hardest one, which is the addition and subtraction of fractions that have to do with different denominators. Now, in SCA, it had many different ways that we were looking at this with the highest common factor, the lowest common multiple, and all that kind of nonsense. Forget about all of that. Well, don't forget about it. it. It does come in handy. But just know there is one method that I taught you that works for all fractions. And that is you multiply your denominators. And then you cross multiply. So B times D is BD. And then I will have A times D to give me AD plus or minus so, um, C times B to give me BC. And look, we had the SCA example here where 7 times 2 is 14. And then you cross multiply. 3 twos are 6. 1 times 7 is 7. The same addition sign is the same addition sign that's going to be here, and you end up get your answer. Right? And we saw some examples here. Now, we didn't do all of these examples. Let me see. We did one. We did which ones? So, number one, what do we have here? We have A over 3 plus 4 over D. 
Now, what did I say when we add, add in fractions? Oh, the first thing you do, multiply your denominators. 3 times D is 3D. Then cross multiply. A times D is AD. You have the plus. 4 times 3 is 12. And that is it. Now remember I was telling you last class that if we look to simplify this further, we'll probably just end up getting back the question. So this is acceptable as the answer there. Number two, I have negative two on three plus one on X. Now the problem here is this negative. Which is negative, the two or the three? Well, the correct answer is either one of them. So any one of them is negative and that will make the whole thing negative but not both of them though eh? not both of them and so i will make the negative 2 the negative on top there plus 1 over x and i just put in the, the negative by the 2 and that negative will make the whole fraction negative right so now i'll multiply my numerators 3 times x is 3x if you had put the negative in front of the 3 you would have get the same thing well, well, almost, it would have been the same thing, right? Um, it, it would have looked different, but it would have been the same thing. So I have 3 times 1 is 3 plus negative 2 times x is negative 2x. And that will work out to be 3 minus 2x all over 3x. We have 3 over x minus 2y over 7. So I don't have to worry about this minus in terms of being a negative. I'll just treat it not like a negative, but like a minus, right? So you'll see this minus here, I'm going to put it here, right? And so I'll just more cross multiply and not worry about the negative, right? So x times 7 is 7x. And then cross multiply, 7 trees are 21 minus 2y times x is 2xy or 2yx you know we like things in alphabetical order right so this is the first question there so the first question this one i'll be asking you guys answers for so uh give me this first question and we'll see how it goes You'll have like um, at a minute and a half, two minutes are waiting. The quicker you do it is the quicker we do it. So say done it. Two minutes. All right. So this one, as I say, no matter how hard it looks, we only know certain rules. Multiply your denominators. So five times two is ten cross multiply so this whole thing will be multiplying by five so you will have five multiply by v plus three you'll have this addition sign you'll have this entire thing multiplying by two so you'll have two multiply by two v plus one now we simplify this is distributive law so five times v is five v and then 5 times 3 is 15. And then we have the plus sign. And then we have 2 times 2v is 4v. Right? And then we have 2 times 1. 2 times 1 is 2. And that, all of that is over 10. And so now we could simplify even more by adding 5 and 4 that is 9v plus 17 over 10 and i will accept that as the final good job tony uh two minutes we only have one thing that we know to to, to do when we add in fractions and that is a multiplier denominators so three twos watch this jabari Three, yes, there we go, Jaden. Good job. Watch this, Jabari. Three twos are six, yes, that's true. But W times W is W squared. So you forgot the square, Jabari. Yeah, um, is that innocent, uh, innocent mistake to make? And then we have here three trees are nine W plus 
5 times 2 is 10W. So I do see some mistakes being made here. 9 plus 10 is 19W all over 6W squared. 6 can really go into 19, so we could just leave it as 19 over 6. But this W can cancel with one of these. Yeah, and so the final answer is actually 19 over 6W. So now we have a multiply. Now, when we are multiplying fractions, you know that you multiply your numerators and you multiply your denominators. But of course, if you just go to do that, you're going to, I mean, you know, it, go, it, it might, it might, it wouldn't be hard, but it'll be a little bit messy because look at how ugly them numbers look in, right? So it must have an easier way. And I noticed, you know, the cross canceling thing that we could cross cancel stuff. Yeah, which is quite amazing. For example, um, imagine this Y could cancel with this Y. So these two Y's gone. This A could cancel with one of these A's. So I'll just have A up here alone. This 2 could cancel with this 4. So up here I just have 2A, right? This 2 could cross cancel with this 6. So I'll have 3Y under here. And can anything else cancel? All right, things getting confusing, so let me do the multiply. So I have 5A cubed times A, which we, we know our laws of indices. So that will be 5A to the power of 4, all right, all over 3Y times 1, because everything cancel over here, so it'll be 3Y, and there is nothing that could cancel from here. And so this is your final answer. Yeah. So if this fraction was just 4 over 2, I could have simplified this fraction before I do anything, right? Yeah. And in terms of what you're talking about, 6y multiply by 4a squared y all over 2ay, you would have probably gotten the same thing. And I'll do it in a different color just so that it wouldn't be too confusing. So you, if you're talking about cross canceling only and not canceling within the same fraction, then you could see that this A could cancel with one of these A's. And so I'll have A squared, right? You could see that this Y could cancel with this Y. Right? You could see that 2 into 4 is 2 and 2 into 6 is 3, so I cross cancel there, right? And so now what I'll have, I'll have 5a squared, which is this, and then on this side I have 2a squared, right? And on this side I'll just have the 3 because the y is cancelled, and on this side I'll have 2y. Right? But you could see here that, yeah, 5a squared times 2a squared is 10a squared all over. Two trees are 6y. But at the same time, Karen, because you did have 10a squared over 6y, so yes, you are correct. But you, so you're doing it this way, that is fine. You still get correct. No, sorry, A4. A4, sorry. 10 A4. So 5 times 2 is 10, and A squared times A squared is A4, right? So I think you still got it correct because I see you have 10 A to the power of, and you didn't put the power, right? So, um, but just remember you forgot that these could simplify, yeah? 
So three yeah, twos are six, five twos are 10. So you'll still end up getting five a to the fourth all over three y. Oh no, everybody gets afraid when they see a divide. When we are multiplying, we flip. So v plus three over 15, multiply and we flip this so it'll be 25 all over v squared plus 3v. Now when it comes to cross multiplication or cross cancelling, this, this is not cross multiplication, eh? this is cross cancelling. Cross multiplication is something different. Cross multiplication is if you have like say x over y is equal to a over b. This is cross multiplication where you could say well you know what this b will multiply by the x and this y will multiply by the a so you're gonna have x x b is equal to a y this is cross multiplication and this is something we will see coming up but what we're talking about here is cross canceling right so it'll i mean i'm seeing here that it you know, I am seeing here that I could definitely cross cancel 15 and 25 to make my life easier. But it would be real good if I could cross cancel these two. And I'm noticing that these two look very familiar. They look similar. So maybe if it is that I could, you know, simplify. Oops, sorry. If I could simplify this one somehow. So what I'll have is I'll have V plus three all over 15, multiply by 25 all over, and I recognize that this could factorize, and this is a thing, right? So over here, I am gonna factorize. I realize that they both have V in common, so I'll pull the V outside, and V times V will give me V squared, and V times three, will give me 3v. This is our multiply, and yes, we could treat this, this line here will make this one number, and that is why that could cancel with that, right? And, and I could see here that five trees are 15, five fives are 25, and so now I'll have one times five, which is five, and then I'll have three times v, which is 3v. This is your final answer. All right. So these four. Now these four are pretty much acting as a summary of fractions. These four here. These four will give you a summary of fractions. You can see here that when you're multiplying fractions, you multiply in numerator a times c to give you ac all over b times d to give you bd. Then in this one here, we have to go a over b multiply by and we flip this to give us d over c and so now we can multiply the numerators and the denominators to give us a d all over b c right and so this here is you know uh, an addition and both of these are done the same way and that's the point that's the reason why i gave it to you as separate questions right you multiply your denominators b times d is bd then you cross multiply a times d is ad plus c times b is bc this one is done the same way you cross multiply so b times d is bd and not cross multiply sorry you multiply denominators and then you cross multiply um a times d is a d minus um, c times b is b c these here if you understand these four you could do any fractions question and fractions questions you will see 
They will involve things like laws of indices. They will involve things like, you know, factorizing, distributive law. They'll involve a lot of skills. All right. Getting a little more serious now. So you could see here. Well, yeah, okay, but you could see here that fractions can involve bod mass too, right? Because this is a bod mass fractions question in algebra. Seven, so, you know, to multiply fractions, we just multiply the numerators and the denominators. And, you know, we had to do the brackets first. It have nothing that could cross cancel here, really. So, seven times two is 14 all over. Um, X times three Y is three X Y. So, this is 14 plus Y over seven. Now, I know that a lot of you all would have wanted to, I know a lot of you all would have wanted to do the same thing that I was telling all you to do all the time, which is multiply this and then cross multiply. Yes, you could do that. But what if there was another way, right? What if I say remember equivalent fractions because I notice in this denominator is 14 this denominator is 7 so if I multiply this by 2 I'll get 14 which is the same denominator so I will just multiply this by 2 as well so now I have an equivalent fraction so in the equivalent fractions this will be 3 x y over 14 plus this will be 2 y because 2 times y is 2 y and 7 times 2 is 14 so now they both have the same denominator yeah. And so now it's the same denominator, so it'll be over 14. And now on top here, I'll have 3xy plus 2y over 14. And I mean, I could factorize the y's to give me y into 3x plus 2 all over 14. And I'll keep that as the final answer. So this will work as a final answer. This will work as a final answer. And I could also say, you know what? This is the same as saying y. This is equivalent to saying y over 14 multiplied by 3x plus 2. You know, all of them are the same. Now, for anybody who didn't do the equivalent fractions, let me do it the long way just to see if we go get, you know, something looking similar. And I'll do it the long way over here in this column here. So from here, right, we have 3xy all over 14 plus y over 7. And I see in here that it had a couple of people who went and multiplied this. So let me do it. Let me do it the long way, right? So 14 times 7 is 98. So I'll have a denominator of 98. Then I'm multiplying 7 trees are 21xy plus 14 why and the thing is that at this point in time you could have say well this is it but it not simplified and your job is to simplify it as much as you could without getting back the original answer you may not have recognized that 21 14 and 98 you know all have seven in common now remember, I could. This is one denominator, so I could split this up into twenty-one x y over ninety-eight plus fourteen y over ninety-eight, 
And then I could recognize that, you know, I could recognize that 7 could go into 21 and 98. 7 into 98 will be 14. And 7 into 21 will be 3. Right? I could recognize that 7 into 14 is 2. 7 into 98 is 14. And look, we end up with the same thing. Right? Once you recognize that these things could cancel, I get 3 xy over 14 plus 2y over 14 which look that was quite over here is where we ended up getting that right and then from here we went and simplified it so even if you did it my way in terms of the the addition and such in terms of the the canceling the cross cross multiply all that kind of madness you would have, if you followed it through, gotten the same answers. You know is an addition, right? And in addition, I teach you to, yeah, you had to multiply your numerators, and then you had to cross multiply like that. The problem is, that looking stupid hard. Because uh, look at them numbers. You know, that's a whole set of dish, blah, blah, blah. That looking dotishly hard. So, all right. I know that that is how we just add fractions. You had a cross mark. But it looking too hard. So, you know what? Nah, all right. I go, I go save that for my final option. So, my final option, if nothing else I work out, will be to do that stuff. Right? That is my final option. But... That looking too hard, right? So now I had to have an easier way. And so what I will notice, this looking very similar to this. This looking factorizable. So let me see if I could simplify things before I had to do the semi demi. Right? So I have 2x plus 8 on the top here, all over. Well, what if I pull 2 out of here? 2 into 2x will give me 4x plus 2 times 8 is 16. You seeing what's going on there, Karen? Yes, sir. I, I stopped it. Plus, I have 3 into x minus 2. And if I factorize here, notice they have y's in common. So if I pull out the y, y times x is xy. And y times, oh my goodness. Look at that. So this, this, because of this here, because remember, multiplication and division glues numbers together. So because of this means I could treat this like one number. This could cancel with this. Right? And this could cancel with this. So now what do I have? I have 1 over 2 plus 3 over y. This is really what the question is. And now, okay, now I could go 2 times y is 2y. 3 to the 6 plus 1 times y is y. And so the final answer will be... 6 plus y all over 2y, which is essentially, if it is that I decide to split this up and try to simplify it more, I will just get back that. So I'll leave the answer like this.